introduction. Uh, I actually went together with a group of USC professors to a Shenzhen visit uh, last Friday. And the way they described me is that, oh, you're the one who left UST. So, so uh, yeah, I actually spent six years here. And Sonia was my colleague. And every time I talked to him, it was, it was in uh, Shanghai, uh, Shanghai dialect, right? It's, it's Shanghainese. Uh, so, so basically, uh, today I'm very happy here to, to talk about this piece of research. Uh, it's a joint research with uh, three friends. Uh, two of them are my former students. So, Che Yi, uh, Du Julan, and Lu Yi. So the acronym is CDLT, which means can do a lot of things, you know. C, CD, right? CDLT, right? So, can do lots of things together, yes. So, uh, now, the, the whole idea actually uh, of doing this project actually originated from a trip I took to Shanghai that was like four or five years ago together with the first one. Uh, I went to teach in Shanghai and so I got him as, as my IA, sorry, TA. Uh, he was my IA and together also TA. And so uh, every time you, 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 you sort of go back to mainland, you, you turn on the TV and you watch these dramas about Japanese invasions. So, so we were really curious about the, the possible long-term impacts. You know, we know whenever you have wars, you have shorter impacts. But, but these shorter impacts can be, can be over very quickly. So the key question to us is whether there will be any long-term impacts. And, and I think this, this, this question is interesting because you see the trend towards globalization and, and people tend to believe it's the economic factors that drive globalization, right? Uh, you see cross-border investment, you see cross-border trade. That's globalization. But at the same time, if you read newspaper every day, and I actually read three different newspapers every day, uh, that uh, you see news about conflicts. Uh, and conflicts tend to happen actually in emerging markets. Because uh, you know, your institute is the Institute for Emerging Market Studies. So it's precisely because you, you tend to see opportunities at the same time, you know, there could be warfare. So, so we, 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 we were really interested in understanding if there's any long-term impact. And I tell you that the, the, there are quite a few studies examining the short-term impacts, okay? Quite a few studies actually looking at the short-term impacts. Uh, but we, we will be focusing on the long-term impact, okay? And quite a few studies actually using data which are cross-country data set. Now, Sony and Professor Sony and Chen is an expert on econometrics, and he will tell you that with cross-country cross study, you really have to control for a lot of factors, which is not, which is not gonna be very easy. So, so what, we, what we'll be using is actually, is sort of cross-region within the same country. Uh, because it's within the same country, you, you don't really have to control for those country-specific factors. So, so basically, we, we try to explore one of the most important conflicts of the 20th, 20th century, which is the Japanese invasion of China. Uh, here, I actually give you some numbers, okay? These are, you know, different sides actually give you different numbers. Uh, I give you the, the more conservative numbers, okay? The Chinese side will give you a much higher number for the casualties. And this is the number of casualties which which was given by the British, okay? Supposed to be on the lower side. So 20 million people actually, the, the, number, the total number of casualties was over 20 million, okay? The total amount of property loss, okay, was more than $380 billion. Relatively speaking, you know, it's, it's even more uh, sort of significant. It's, it was about 50 times of the GDP of Japan at the time. So, so this is actually very significant, all right? Now, uh, I'd like to talk about this contribution later, okay? Uh, uh, so, so, so the way to conduct a research examining the long-run impacts is, is not gonna be very easy because you know, so many things actually happened between 1945 and 2015, right? So, so this is why you know you have to be very careful in 
in choosing the data sets and, and, and also working out estimation strategies. Uh, so, so basically, we, we have three different data sources. The first one is, is really, you know, we, we will be focusing on foreign tra the trade and investment between the two countries, okay? Now, some other studies, studies actually focusing on the impact of the wars on the specific countries where the, where the war took place. Now, to us, this is less interesting. Wherever you have war, of course, population decrease, you know, uh, infrastructure get destroyed. You know, this is so obvious, right? So, so we look at the, the, the relationship between the two countries, you know. Uh, in this case, it's Japan and China. So, so this, this is why the first data set is actually, is the data set of foreign invested enterprises, okay? Uh, actually, two days ago, someone was, was actually asking me, if we still have these data set, you know, this is actually, is, is really amazing. We actually got these data set 15 years ago, and, and nowadays it's, it's almost impossible to get access to, to this particular data set, even though we know that the, the government still does survey every, every year, okay? The data was only released for two years, which is, which is two, two, uh, 2000 and 2001, all right? It, it covers all the foreign invested firms in China. So, so from this particular data set, we get to know, we actually get to know the identity, the location of investment in China. So this is foreign direct investment in China. So we know the location. For us, basically, we, we look at the regional level, which is 30 some plus regions in China. <coughs> we also know the, the year where the investment was made, okay, and the amount of capital investment and, and also the cumulative amount of investment. So, so the investment can be, you know, can take place over time, all right. So this is the first data set, actually. We, we, we have altogether 109 countries or regions investing in China, and this is our sort of the sample, the, the sample we analyze. And we also, of course, you know, these days when you do analysis, you have to do lots of robustness checks. So, our results are still there if you exclude investments coming from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, if you exclude investments coming from uh, South Korea, actually. Uh, uh, South Korea is kind of a little bit sensitive because, you know, uh, if you read the literature, South Korea actually participated in the invasion. Uh, so it's called Second Devil. Uh, 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 so, so this is actually in Chinese. So, so, uh, for the full analysis, we have the full sample, and, but we do actually do lots of subsample analysis, and the results are still there. And this is the first data set. Yes? Uh, my question is uh, that FDI investment is in that year or by that year? It's actually not in that particular year. The survey was done in 2000, so it covered all the foreign di direct investment projects that they can survive up until 2000. So you do have a survival bias issue, okay? And this is an issue we cannot really deal with. Uh, so it's sort of a, a snapshot of all the investment projects, maybe starting from 1978 all the way. So you got, you got, this is why you actually have different years of establishment, okay? Uh, when we examine the direct investment coming from Japan, we <coughs> use four different measures. Number one is the number of projects. Number two is the amount of investment in one particular year, which is year 2001. And third is the total amount of investment starting from the beginning of the enterprise all the way to 2001. And lastly is the timing of entry, okay? Especially the timing of the first entry, say for the province of Hubei, when was the first investment was made, okay? These are four different measures on investment. Now on trade, it's relatively easy. Basically, basically we have these uh, customs data. So, so you can actually get to know for each Chinese regions, it's imports from Japan, it's exports to Japan, so that you know the total trade between these provinces with Japan. So three different measures for trade. Imports, exports, total trade. And the third data set, I think, is the most interesting one. 
That is, how do you really measure the severity of damage caused by the Japanese invasion? Right. You know, I was, I was telling you that some other studies focusing on cross-country data sets, right, uh, with which you actually have issues with how to control for those factors. So we are focusing on one country, which is China, different regions, right? And so, so we actually got hold of a book. Uh, this is a very, uh, very important book, a history of the investigation of China's losses during World War II. I think it was prepared by the Kuomintang government, uh, hoping that they, they could get some compensation from Japan. So it was very detailed, okay? We only use part of the data sets, actually. Uh, you, you guys are encouraged to look through all the book, uh, and there could be some other applications. Uh, now, so, so, so basically, you actually get information about the number of civilians who got wounded, or who, who actually got died uh, during this invasion. Now, it doesn't have to be civilian casualties. You can actually use military casualties. But to us, civilian casualties is a better measure. To, 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 to kind of like describe the kind of feelings people have towards the Japanese. Soldiers are meant to have wars with other countries. So if soldiers die, it's not really a big issue. But when you've got civilians uh, sort of wounded or even become uh, perished because of this war, I think it's a sort of a something that you always talk about, you know, through, through different generations and this memory kind of lingers. So, so uh, I just want to give you, uh, so, so we actually have the ratio of civilian casualties to the pre-war population, so it's a percentage, all right? Now, this actually, this actually is, a, is, is a map showing you the, the variation <coughs> of civilian casualties across different regions in China. Now, we, when we do this kind of analysis, we, we really love variations, you know, because if you don't have variations, you cannot have a good regression results. So, so what you see is that the darker the color, the higher the civilian casualties, all right? So it turns out to be that the central corridor of China is the place where much of these casualties took place, okay? Uh, James is an expert on history, so uh, uh, he, there are many reasons, you know, it, it could be because of the railway, it could be because, you know, uh, this is the sort of the boundary between the resistance region and this, this is sort of the occupied region, you know. Uh, now, I, I want to highlight that the, the editor somehow uh, doesn't like four Chinese writing a paper about the non impacts of the Japanese invasion. So in the very final letter, he said, I don't like your map, because in your map, you've got a lot of smaller dots. Please get rid of these dots. He said, you are making a political statement. So, 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 so we used to have a lot of dots here and there, right? And, and for this particular map, you don't see the dots. So, so I, I, I kind of understand why it took so many years to get through this process. You know, it's basically politically sensitive, all right? Uh, so, so uh, summary of the key variables. Uh, if you're interested, I can send you a copy. Uh, now. The key part of my talk is really about the identification, right? Now, the, uh, basically we use what we call difference in difference approach, okay? So you examine the Japanese investment in a particular region in China, okay? You, you kind of compare Japanese investment in a particular region in China, say Guangdong, all right? compare Japanese investment with the investment of other countries in the same province, right? And then you examine this difference across different regions in China, okay? And try to link this difference to this Japan-specific factor, which is the Japanese, this is this casualty caused by the Japanese invasion, okay? Now, the beauty of doing this is that when you simply just look at Japanese investment in a province, there are so many factors at the regional level determining whether there's more or less Japanese investment in this particular province, right? 
It could be these regions, particularly open. Uh, maybe this region has very good infrastructure. Uh, or maybe this region has very well educated population. So this is why if you just look at the absolute level of investment coming from Japan, it's very hard to pin down whether this is influenced by the Japanese invasion, the, the civilian casualties. So what we do is that you look at the difference of this investment from Japan and the investment from other countries. So, so why the Japanese is having relatively more investment in these province, or relatively less inv investment in some other provinces compared with other countries? Okay, so that's the first difference. The second difference is that across different regions, the difference between the Japanese investment and investment from other countries, it differ, right? Now, what is really causing that? Right. So, so when you do the second difference, you, you get rid of some of these country-specific factors. Okay, so I'll get to that. Okay, Sonia is about to ask questions. You know, I'm I, I, I'm waiting for the first shot. Okay, <laughs> this is rather uncertain. I don't know when she, he's going to start asking questions. All right. Uh, so, so basically, uh, this is the specification. So, the here is the outcome variable. I will tell you in a minute. Uh, well, I should tell you right away. Uh, this is the bilateral economic relation between country F with Chinese region R. R stands for Chinese region, okay? F stands for foreign country, all right? Now, it could be investment. Let's say it's, let's say it's investment, then it's the total number of enterprises invested by foreign country F. We have a lot of foreign countries, all right? in Chinese region R that was still operating in year 2001. So, answering your question earlier, right? And then the second variable is the value of capital investment made by the investors from country F in these enterprises, okay? And the third variable for investment is the value of accumulated capital investment. And the last one is, is the calendar year when the first investment was made. Okay, so, so that's actually four different dependent variables regarding investment. For trade, it's going to be the total trade value between Chinese region R and foreign country F. That's total trade, which can be decomposed into imports and exports. So you have the value of imports by region R from country F. You have the exports from, 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 from uh, from country, uh, from, sorry, from region R to country F, okay? So you have these seven different dependent variables. Now, these economic activities are influenced by regional fixed effect, okay? The educational level, the quality of infrastructure, the quality of economic institutions, degree of openness, degree of xenophobia, you know, you, you, you know, there's a long list of things which is, which is, really, which, which is really hard to control for, right? And, and then you also have a list of, uh, you have these control variable, sorry, a fix, a fixed effect for foreign country. You know, certain countries are just more likely to do business with China, you know. Uh, some countries, especially smaller countries, uh, uh, or maybe uh, the language distance is shorter, uh, maybe uh, they share similar religious beliefs, etc., etc., right? And then the third variable is, is, is the distance, you know, because you, we know from trade theory that uh, the, the, uh, the gravity theory, the investment, you know, you tend to invest in countries which are geographically closer to you. You tend to trade with countries that are geographically closer to you, okay? So, so we control for distance, okay? And, and this is the key variable. This is actually, ZR stands for the civilian casualty of region R uh, during the Japanese invasion, okay? And because we, we do regression for all the foreign countries, so it's only for the, for the investment from Japan or trade with Japan, we have indicated variable, Japan F, which is equal to one if the investment or if the trade uh, with Japan. If it's with other foreign countries, this indicated variable will be zero. So our 
our interest is, is really about this, the sign of beta. We like to see this sign of beta to be uh, negative. That is uh, negative. All right. Now, uh, uh, when you do difference in difference, these two things just just got got cancel out. All right. So so in the end, you don't really have the control for these this fixed effect for region, fixed effect for foreign country, all right? Double difference after double difference. So, so uh, let me just go through, I try to finish this one quickly. We don't really have a watch here, you know, I don't. Uh, 25, 12. 25, okay. Let me try to finish in, in 15 minutes and then answer your questions, all right? Now, uh, this is what I just explained, all right? So, this is a technical issue I put up this slide just for Song Nian, all right? So, so there, there are a lot of countries having zero trade with China or zero investment in certain parts of China. So these zeros, okay? The method I'm going to use will just skip these zero observations. So that there's a better way, there's sort of a, another way utilizing these zero observations, which is called PPMLE estimation strategy. Uh, we use that as a robustness check, all right? Uh, now, the main results, let me just show you the graph, okay? The, the first thing is what we call adjusted correlation, okay? Whenever someone tells you it's adjusted, it, it, it sounds something like there's some data mining going on, right? <laughs> now, actually, uh, I want to explain that adjusted meaning you control for the, uh, the fixed effects for Chinese regions, you control for the fixed effects for countries, you also control for distance. No, to us, these are legitimate, you know, these are, these are the stuff you have to control for, all right? After you control for these fixed effects and distance, you see a negative correlation, okay, between civilian casualties, and this is actually, is the number of investment Okay, so number of investment. You see, you see negative slope, all right? Now, uh, and this is the regression results. It shows that it's actually uh, this, 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 this key coefficient we're interested is negative uh, for, the f for the first three columns and positive for the last column. The, the last column is really about the timing of the investment. When the coefficient is positive, it means the more casualties this particular region suffers, then the later it will receive investment from Japan. Okay, so, so it's consistent with the first three columns. The first three columns are about the number of projects, the investment in year 2001, and the cumulative investment, which is the third column. All right? So now it's, it's, it's very helpful for you to read all these. So this, is, this actually summarizes the results. Chinese regions that suffer more war casualties, they actually accommodated less investment from Japan. Uh, with four different measures, they actually get less projects, few projects from Japan, and less amount of investment from Japan for, the, for, for this particular year, and also cumulative investment is also lower. And lastly, late timing in receiving direct investment from Japan. Okay. So, so wherever you do this kind of analysis, you have to look at the economic magnitude, the impact, right? Uh, so, so, so basically, we do two sets of analysis. The first thing we, we do is that suppose there is there's a one percentage point decrease in civilian casualty. What will happen to the investment? Okay, so it's just one percent decrease in civilian casualties, and you see the number of projects were increased by close to 8%. And the amount of investment were increased by something, the, the current investment were increased by 23%, cumulative investment were increased by 16%, and investment from Japan will arrive half a year earlier. So, 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 so these are the economic impacts. And the other exercise, we do is that suppose there is no war, so the civilian casualty is zero, okay? So for, for year 2001, we realize for that particular year, okay, you could have 
more than 1,200 more projects if there had been no war at all, okay? So, so I mean, it's pretty su su substantial. I mean, you, you think 1,200 is sort of a small number, right? I mean, when I first look at it, it's kind of a small number. And the investment amount is, is, is 1 billion and cumulative investment is 4.6 billion. But remember, that's just for one particular year, okay? There's no way for us to, to do a reasonably accurate forecast. You can, you can just count him from 1945 all the way to 78. Now, during that particular period, China was really slow in growing, right? From 78 all the way to 2001, right? And then starting from 2001 all the way to 2015, you know, so you, if, you, if you're adding all these things up, the impact is actually pretty significant. I mean, it's a, it's a sizable number, all right? So this is the investment part. For the trade part, it's very similar, all right? We look at the total trade, it's negative, right? Now, imports, negative, but the exports, you don't see the negative correlation. In other words, the Chinese Okay, if the region is suffering, suffering a lot of casualties, they, they, they import less from Japan, but they export, you could still export the same amount of exports to Japan, you know? So exports are different because, you know, when you import something from Japan, if you drive a Toyota, right, uh, uh, your friends will criticize you, but if you're selling things to, if you're selling DJI drum to, uh, to Japan, that's okay, you make money from Japanese, you know? So, so I think Chinese people, they know, how to distinguish between imports and exports. But the total trade is affected, okay? Because total trade is basically imports plus exports. As exports being negatively affected, so the total trade is also being negatively affected. So, so the regression results shows you the same thing. So for total trade, it's negative. Uh, but then for the, for the exports, I think it's, it's close to the borderline. I think it's 10% uh, p-value, okay? Uh, so again, we do two exercises. So we look at the, the uh, one percentage point decrease, uh, and then the trade, the imports were increased by 15%. The total trade were increased by 16%, okay? And for the year 2001, had there been no war at all, they will have $10 billion more imports from Japan. Now, is 10 billion a really large number? Possibly not, but if you add up all these years, it can be very substantial, all right? Now, and then we tried to uh, do some robustness checks. Since Sonia is not asking any questions, so I skip that, all right? Uh, so, so you still have the same results, all right? Now, I think this is, this is the last part of the presentation. It's really about the mechanisms, you know? So, so now we show that regions with greater civilian casualties that trade less with Japan, they receive less investment from Japan, So what is the mechanism, right? Uh, what is this civilian casualty really capture about, okay? So in the next few slides, I'm gonna show you that civilian casualties actually capture the kind of feeling the Chinese people actually have towards the Japanese, the degree of trust the Chinese people actually have towards the Japanese, okay? So, so for, for that exercise, we actually utilize the Chicago Council uh, survey, uh, they actually have the survey of global views every two years. Uh, we use year 2006 survey. And there are a lot of questions in the survey, right? So we, we pick five. Don't, don't ask me why these five. Uh, there is some degree of data mining, obviously. Uh, but, but I think these questions are, are pretty relevant. Uh, that's why I put it, relevant questions. The first question is how much Chinese people actually trust Japan to act responsibly in the world? Actually, the survey actually asks not just Chinese attitude towards Japan, but also towards the United States, okay? So, so we use uh, these two data together, okay? Now, the second category is really about general feelings, other general feelings like uh, whether you think a particular foreign country is playing a positive role in resolving the key issues facing Asia, okay? And the third question is how much influence you Chinese, you want a foreign country to have in the world? The fourth question is really about whether you think a foreign country takes the interest of China in its foreign policy. And 
Lastly is whether you think a foreign country practice fair or unfair trade with China. So, so these are the survey questions. Uh, we actually got survey in nine different regions in China, close to 2,000 surveyees. And these are the questions asked for not just Japan, but also the United States and also some other countries that we choose the answers to regarding Japan, and also the answers to about, about Americans, so, so you can do the dif difference, okay? So again, it's difference, difference. It's one difference, it's not two different, uh, sort of a, yeah, you actually, eventually you will have double differences in the regression analysis. Now, this is, this is what we observe, okay? Everything is consistent. That is, you know, in regions with higher casualties, you tend to see a lower level of trust in the belief that Japan act responsibly in the world, okay? You see a greater proportion of the people saying they have a negative view about Japan uh, in resolving Asia's issue. And you see uh, a smaller, uh, you see more people actually prefer Japan to have a smaller influence in, in the world because you know, they don't trust Japan, okay? And number four, uh, you, you got a lower degree of agreement in regions with greater civilian casualties that uh, Japan actually takes China's interest in its foreign policy considerations. And lastly, you see a greater proportion of Chinese holding the view that Japan practices unfair trade with China. Now, it's kind of unfair to say someone who is really practicing something unfair. You know, I, 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 uh, the way I look at it is, is like the trade between the two countries is pretty fair. It's, it's so, so it's all about the feelings, you know, okay? Now, these are the graphs, you know, uh, you, you can see they are negative, negatively sloped, okay? Because the, uh, the horizontal scope is the, is the civilian casualty and the other one is about the, the feeling, the attitude, all right? So, uh, sometimes it's positive, you know, it's, uh, because of the question, you know? So, uh, I'll let give you the... Uh, now, we, we then do a regression analysis to, to, to further confirm that the, the, the findings from the graphs are, are really uh, robust. So, so basically, this is about a particular person, I, in region R, his attitude toward foreign country F, which could be Japan or United States. And then you have the individual fixed effect, country fixed effect, distance. You know, this is the key again, civilian casualty, the Japan indicator, which equals to one, if the survey is about attitude towards Japan, equals to zero if the survey is really about attitude towards the American. And then you have some control variables. Uh, uh, Sony, again, is not asking questions. I think this is the, this is the place where he should ask questions. Uh, maybe I'm going a little bit fast. Uh, so, so, so basically, uh, we find that, that uh, indeed, you know, the results reinforce our argument that, uh, that you have these negative impacts of Japanese invasion on, on people's feeling. You know, it's, you see, 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 the mechanism is really, is really about the, the, the war actually create these sort of chronical psychological conditions, uh, these, these, these memories about the war uh, that, that lead to a lack of uh, trust and lead to an uh, unfavorable attitude of the, of the Chinese towards the Japanese. Uh, and that is the stuff actually causing these negative impacts on trade and investment. And the results, the diverging results between imports and exports are highly consistent with our explanation. Uh, so, so uh, am I doing really quickly? I think, uh, yeah. So, so, so I think this is actually coming back to the conclusion that we show that historical animosity still matters in today's world despite the trend towards globalization. You know, people tend to, tend to just focusing on economic factors for, glo for globalization. Uh, what I believe is that there are many other factors, non-economic factors get into the way of globalization. It could be the wars, it could be politics. Actually, the other project I'm working on is, <coughs> does Chinese imports affect American politics? Uh, I, was, I was thinking about presenting that paper, but we were really slow producing a paper. So, so, so there we show that uh, uh, the American uh, in those districts receiving or having more imports from China, they're, they're more likely to elect Democrats. So 
because Democrats tend to be caring about the interest of the ordinary people, right? And, and that's the first step. And the second step is that we show that these, these elected officials, they tend to vote against trade, trade bills. So it took us a long time to, to look at all the bills through different congresses and classifying them either pro-trade or anti-trade. So, so the Democrats, they, they tend to vote against trade they tend to vote for redistribution. So you've got another set of views looking at redistribution. You have to classify whether it's pro-redistribution or anti-redistribution. So, so to me, the, the, these two research are uh, 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 actually having, sharing the same thing. That is, you have a lot of, a lot of these non-economic factors getting into the way. So globalization is not going to be very smooth. Okay? So finally, uh, if the Japanese and Chinese can turn the, the duck page, I think the, uh, the, the two countries could, could actually have much greater trade and investment. You know, I, I like to make this point because, he, because you know, this, is, this, is, this actually illustrates the importance of doing a proper econometric analysis. Because if you look at the aggregate level, Japan is among the top three investing in China, among the top three having trade with China. So if you look at the aggregate level, you say, hey, the war has no impact. So you have to do a careful difference in difference to tease out the long-term impacts of the war on China-Japan relations. And I shall stop here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jigong. Oh. Uh, so we have a full house. I'm sure there are questions. So why don't we just take yes. some? Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the invasion of China by Japan is predates Second World War. In fact, you know, that's a wrong history. You know, it's small country. Your China's weak country, so it has been under this invasion for a long time before 1937. So, how much impact is that in terms of this sort of a negative? You mean that the invasion took place I mean, much exactly. earlier? Yes. Much earlier, even before ah, 1937. Bagu Lianjing. Bagu Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, you know, when I when I presented this paper in Qinghua, and someone said, "Hey, why don't you do a Bagu Lianjing study?" Yeah. Uh, and because you know we have a lot of students here, you know, one project I like to do very much, but my graduate students keep uh, saying no to me, is that if there's any impact, it should show up in marriage. The number of Chinese women marrying Japanese men. <laughs> so I keep asking my students to dig out the data. They say no, they don't have data. I'm sure there is data. Okay, so anyone who can find the data, I would be more than happy to give you my data and to do analysis. So uh, same thing about Park Wen You know, the Chinese women actually like to marry. French woman, a French man, right? So, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, I know you, you I think the, 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 your question is, it's really case by case. When I was saying that, uh, you see, see, the other time I presented this paper in front of an American whose wife is a Japanese, he said, no, 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 this is, this is all China, Japan specific. So, so the other study you should do is really cross-country study. That is, you know, there are many Asian countries being invaded by the Japanese. You know, uh, why the Filipinos really like the Japanese now? Uh, maybe, yeah. So, so yes. So it could be due to the post-war propaganda. You know. Well, that's yeah. precisely the point. Yeah. The Philippines did not suffer before 19, the Second World War. Right. So China right. suffered long, long time. Ago. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's a difference. Yes. So, so, uh, so our study just want to highlight the negative impact. So the two countries should really sit down and resolve this issue. You know. So. Uh, yes. But that's colonization. So, so colonization is different from invasion. So in fact, the, the three northeastern provinces, uh, they were taken by the Japanese in a very different approach. Uh, so I think uh, it's different from invasion. All right. Uh, it looks like you should watch more videos uh, and dramas from, from, from China to, to, to get, a, get a view of uh, what's really going on. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Where's your second question? Yeah. Casualties. Yeah, we're focused in the central part of China, right? Yes. So could it be because, like, because of other factors like the transportation, or how, how like, um, in the central area, do they have good transportation way or like good harbor? So the Japanese people cannot do very good investment. Or right, right. That, that's a, that's a very good point. That's why we use differences in differences. That is, you're right. That is. Maybe because the central part of China doesn't really have very good infrastructure, that's why the Japanese invest less over there. But why the Japanese invest even less than what the American does? So, so, so we compare Japanese investment with other countries' investment. When you do this comparison, you basically do the difference. You, you get rid of these factors you just mentioned about, all right? Yeah? Oh, yeah. and the total amount of trade in the province compared to um, the correlation between the amount of investment and the casualties? I don't really get a question. Maybe the trade result is being driven by the FDI result. That's your question. It's, it's possible, but uh, how does this affect our result? Well, I'm not questioning so, the so, so what I'm saying is that we actually look at the impact on both trade and investment. So you're saying, you're saying these two things reinforce each other, which, which is possible, but uh, I think it's possible because these days you have these sort of vertical FDI that is you invest over there as a platform for your global supply chain. So it is possible, yes, you're right. But You know, there, there are actually quite a few studies look at the contemporary effect. Okay, so in other words, you know, when China actually has territorial disputes with Japan, say in 2012, immediately you got less trade and investment between the two countries. So, so in other words, what I'm trying to say is that this trend you're talking about is really influenced by many other factors. Okay, if the two countries can have reconciliation, then the trends towards no effect into the distant future, right? But if the two countries still kind of play up the propaganda machine, uh, you know, propaganda on, on the China side and the deny on the Japanese side, then this thing may actually persist over time. So it's hard for us to predict. I think uh, our study just calls for attention to, towards this issue and, and seriously the two countries should really sit down and resolve this issue, yeah. Yes. We use year 2001 precisely because of data limitation, because you know, the, the FDI data set was for that particular year. And therefore, we used the trade data for the same year. Now, if I actually had the data, say 2014, I would expect even greater <coughs> impact uh, because of the propaganda in the last 10, 15 years. If you look at the development, it was a trade data, yes. yes, it's doable actually, yeah, yes. That, that's a very good. That, that's a very good point. That is, that these are all what I call non-economic factors. You know, where you have sister cities, where you have confusion institute, where you have more ch more Chinese traveling to these Japanese cities, where you have more Chinese women marrying Japanese men. Things will change. Yeah, I think uh, these are the other factors. You know, that, that they will 
attenuate these negative impacts. Yes. So I have one. I have two questions. Uh, okay. One is you have control over the region fixed effects and the country fixed yeah. effects, but you haven't control over any interactions of region and country characteristics. You might think that in the in the in the second regression we do. In the second regression. Yeah, yeah, you do. yeah. I'm no, wondering yeah. why you didn't do that in the first regression. You might imagine that Asian countries respond to different township uh, province characteristics than other countries, or that yes. countries very close to China, like Japan, maybe the distance is much more important, or, uh -huh. or maybe all of the Japanese investment is highly concentrated in a couple of provinces, which just happen to be low casualty provinces, and that's going to just kind of dominate any of these uh, controls that you're, uh, you're looking at. Uh, uh, the short answer to your question is that no specification is perfect, all right? Uh, so so uh, let, let me just show the specification, all right? Because we are basically focusing on this beta, which is the, the interaction term between this region, regional factor and this country factor, right? So, so it's sort of a R times F, right? So, so that's why we control for R, control for F, but we don't want to have too many other control variables at the country region level, which may affect this beta, right? For sure, right? So, so, so this is why, you know, uh, yes, you can control for these things, yes. Uh, so, so in the second regressions, we do control for this, all right? And because in the second regression, actually, we do control this. Uh, we actually control for interaction between F, foreign country, and region, right? So we actually have a long list of control variables. We actually did the same thing for the first regression, but then the referee say, hey, you know, I want to have a very clean stuff. And, you know, the referee is not being very consistent. Uh, to me, we should either have no control at the region, foreign country level, or have the same sets of control, yes. But, but it's kind of sensitive because if you introduce more control, yeah, you may actually take away some of these impact, yeah. Do you control the, say, the foreign media exposure to? Because your data is more robust for the, for the inner, inner part of right, the right, right. which they don't have access to, say, the same CNN or other. But that's precisely we do difference in difference. That is, the same region that has less media coverage less exposure to, to foreign news, they receive less investment from Japan, but they receive relatively more investment from America. Why? Well, it's because of these, this particular region actually suffers greater casualty during World War II. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Jims, Jims. So, I think this is uh, very neat stuff. There's uh. something that I, I think I'm still missing. So, when you talked about the mechanism, so you're using the Chinese perceptions from different regions. Uh, and it's correlation with its civilian casualties. Yes. Yeah. But when you are looking at variations across different regions in terms of investments and trade, so my understanding is that the initiative should have come from the Japanese themselves. And then when you're doing the mechanism, the initiatives are from the Chinese. So I yes. want you to flush yes. out the dynamic behind. Yes, yes. Uh, very, very, very good point. That is, ideally, we should use surveys uh, of Japanese toward toward the toward the Chinese. Yes, yeah. That's. Uh, it would be great to have such a survey. Uh, so there's no such data. I'm not so sure. I think they, they, it should be available somewhere. Yeah. You know, the other thing which I didn't really report here is that the Japanese prefer to use joint ventures instead of wholly owned subsidiaries in those regions with, you know, that suffer greater casualties. So when you have a joint venture, you have a Chinese partner who can actually help you to, to deal with the local people. I think it's a very interesting strategy, yeah. So the Japanese, is, to us, is fully aware of the negative feeling of the Chinese towards them. And therefore, they use alternative organizational structure to deal with this impact. Good question. Yeah. Compared to other countries, another question is: We ever try to com uh, 
compare the, uh, uh, the contribution of Chinese tourists to Japanese economy. Now I think a lot of tourists rushing there to buy the you know, products, so I don't see that they don't trust the Japanese thing. Uh, actually, they trust more than mm -hmm. the Chinese made the products. Yeah, very good point. Now, in the first draft of this paper, we look at the region foreign country product level trade. So, as you say, controlling for industries, right? That actually gives us more variations. But then the referees say, hey, your key independent variable is at the region country level. Why you use this dependent variable, which is at a dis disaggregate level? So, so, so uh, just, just, just sort of a long story short. You know, this is, is the same. Is the same message. Okay. Now, the second point, we, we, this, the second thing which I didn't report here is that we look at these product characteristics for certain products. The Japanese really have comparative advantage. Okay, so we find that for these sets of products, the Chinese cannot get away from these products because they have to buy from Japan. They, they, they are no substitutes. So the, the negative impact is going to be a lot more smaller. So in other words, the Chinese are being very pragmatic. So they don't like consuming Japanese goods. But if there's no choice, they have to buy from Japan. Right. Yes? You talked about when you talked about analysis, right? You talked about the perception. So, like, people don't trust Japanese or, you know, they think they're unfair. So, it's a perception issue. So, from what I understand, in the years which happened after the war invasion, that's basically the period of Mao Zedong, he had a very good propaganda machine, really. right? So, I th yes. do, do you think it affected? Because you see, when the Britishers came to <coughs> China, they waged this opium war. And I think that caused much more economic loss and you know casualties to China as compared to the invasion, <coughs> which is in fact very short-lived. Mm -hmm. So do you think there's an effect of propaganda by the Chinese government of Mao Zedong when you take this? This, this is why you know I I I, uh, I talked to uh, an economist in UK. I say you should do a research about uh, using the setting of Europe. That is the. Uh, the, uh, the Germans' invasion of, of Soviet Union, Russia, right? So uh, it's a data issue. I think young people like Beijing, you know, uh, that uh, they take a lot of energy. They should, should really move into this. And uh, so I, I actually predict that there, there are similar effects. If you look at the uh, recent, the, the, the uh, debt issue increase, the, the Greek people basically say is that, uh, you know, it's Nazi com coming from German. Germany again, you know, uh, telling us what to do. So, so the feeling is, is you have this lingering feeling, right? And this lingering feeling varies across this, across different regions because they suffer different degrees of casualties. That uh, that uh, if the two countries are nice to each other, you don't see this. But whenever you have a fight, you know, it's like couple, right? Whenever they have a fight, they talk about things that happened many years ago. <laughs> Oh, actually, so, yeah. so you, you could draw some interesting parallels between, say, Germany and Israel. You see? So if you have data. Data limitation, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the amount of energy. You know, I think young folks, you know, uh, they, they can do that. You know, I, I, I yes. I'm going to answer her question in Shanghai dialect. Yes, I think these, these are things which are doable and uh, we didn't do it, actually. Yeah. yeah, and I guess I'm wondering, is it because... Well, uh, the second part of the analysis, uh, the data set is, is not so ideal. We only have right. surveys in nine regions. Right. Okay. Because it's... Exactly, you have to use the Asian barometer. Which yeah. Is, um, it yes. 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 Yeah. It's something worthwhile to do. Yeah. Thank you for
Thank you. Thank you for coming. Happy Chinese New Year. Yeah.